With the Vancouver Canucks clinching their spot in the NHL playoffs for the first time in quite a while, those who enjoy sports betting now have more skin in the game. Others, though, say that is not a good thing. Earlier this year, CBC's Marketplace team looked at seven NHL and NBA games and found gambling messages filled up 21% of each broadcast, reflecting the growing push for fans to take part. And it's not just fans. While athletes are generally trusted to stay far from the gambling scene, Toronto Raptor John Tate Porter and LA Dodgers star pitcher Shohei Otani are both involved in betting scandals. For more on this, we're now joined by Luke Clark, the director of the Center for Gambling Research at UBC. Luke, thanks for joining us. First of all, this NHL season, exceptionally exciting for Canucks fans, feeling a bit starved. Not everyone can feel compelled to put money on the line. How do, though, people get drawn into sports betting, at, uh, in, at least initially? Uh, yeah, the, the main motives for, um, uh, you know, across all forms of gambling are uh, uh, desire and a, a, a need to win money and a drive for excitement and, and, and coping with uh, low mood and anxiety. But in the in the case of sports betting, um, we also see the the involvement in sport itself, the, the, the fandom uh, as an important factor there. So for people who follow a particular sport or in a particular league, there's a tendency to see betting as um, a way to use that knowledge and maybe an easy way to make money. Uh, and of course, the reality uh, is very different that they're, they're betting against a bookmaker who has huge amounts of data at their, at their disposal to set the odds. R explain to us what in-play betting is and how that has changed the pace of gambling. Yeah, modern sports betting has um, changed um, quite, quite dramatically uh, as an activity over the last couple of years. This is since uh, the federal bill that came in, in in 2021 in Canada, although in other parts of the world it's, it's existed for for, um, uh, for longer than that. Um, and uh, the the, the in-play betting uh, or, or live betting here is a shift where previously gamblers would mainly bet on the the outcome of a match before it started. Now it's possible to bet after a match has begun and to bet repeatedly um, throughout the match uh, on you know, what's going to happen next, uh, who's going to score the next goal. So this all um, speeds up the pace of the, uh, the, the game, and it becomes much easier to bet impulsively and to chase losses. What does your center's research say about gambling ads? Uh, who do they impact the most? Yeah, from the research internationally, there's a, there's a lot of evidence that um, gambling advertising and exposure to ads is linked to intentions to gamble, is linked to positive attitudes towards gambling uh, and actual gambling. Um, there are there are two slightly different pieces to to the psychology behind advertising. For, for people who are already gambling regularly, um, these ads contain a lot of learned associ associations. They're, um, uh, they're full of, uh, of triggers that can elicit craving. So you, know, you can imagine someone in recovery from a gambling problem who's trying to watch televised sports and they're bombarded by these cues. And then the second concern would be around uh, youth who uh, are maybe below the legal age to gamble, but are attracted to gambling through um, the, uh, the marketing. Right. Luke Clark, the director of the Center for Gambling.